Hello, everybody. It's Jeff Whiteman here. Uh, I'm uh, the subject of this week's Athletics Weekly Ask the Athlete. Uh, my athletics days, God, you have to go back to black and white days. I ran a couple of uh, championship marathons. Uh, I was sixth in the European Championships in 1990 and eighth in the Commonwealth Games uh, and have subsequently worked in the sport in a variety of different roles, including agent, uh, sportswear manager, uh, worked at Scottish Athletics and at UK Athletics and now uh, coaching and announcing. So here come the questions that, that have been lodged in advance. Uh, what inspired you to get into running? The first race I ever did was with the Cub Scouts uh, and, and there was a style on the course and I just happened to get to the style at a point where the adults that were hurling people over the style reached out. He flung me over the style and I ran down the hill and that that uh, movement probably took me from about 20th to third, and I stayed in third. Um, and I often wonder if that guy hadn't thrown me across the stile and down the hill, would I have had any sense that I could run a little bit? Uh, because by the time I got to secondary school, I volunteered for the cross-country club and, and got into it and joined uh, Dartford Harriers in 1973. But my very earliest involvement was Cubs. Uh, what do you think of the current domestic grassroots scene? And are there any lessons from the past, the 70s and 80s, that could benefit today's athletes? The comparisons are very, very difficult to make because when we were running in the 70s and 80s, there, there weren't the same distractions. Um, football, as another sport, was fairly even with athletics at different times. And uh, the explosion of the Premiership and, and Sky Sports came in the 90s. Um, there weren't fast food joints, there weren't entertainment complexes, uh, there weren't mobile phones, there wasn't uh, the internet. So so when you did a hobby, you could really do it as much as you wanted and it didn't appear geeky or unusual and it, it didn't drag you away from other things. Uh, and I think we'll, we'll not be able to rewind to that set of circumstances. Um, but I think we just have to try and recognise that competition formats, training formats, um, anything that seeks to engage young people has to be quicker. It has to be um, something that they can dip in and out of rather than absorb completely as we did when we got into running in the in the 70s. If you could paint a picture of what it was like to commentate on Jake's final 1500 metre lap in Oregon, how would you describe it? Well, uh, going into the last lap, I would say it was normal. It was, it was like almost every 1500 metres is. Uh, it was fairly quick. Um, there were still probably eight or nine out of the field of 12 in contention. Inga Britson had just hit the front. And from there, the most normal scenario would be that he would push on and go away. But Jake's race brief was stick with him uh, to cover the brakes. And I could tell from his body language that he was looking OK. His, his positioning was good. So when he did force his way around just before the bend really started, um, that was pretty exciting. I was, my heart was probably racing a bit. And you wouldn't have detected that from the commentary. But then coming into the straight, although the two of them were getting away, Josh wasn't too far behind, Tim Chariot wasn't too far behind. So really a lot of my concentration was just on identification. I was also vaguely aware that the British record, most British record could go, go down. So I was, I was just keeping an eye on, on the clock as well. But yeah, it was exciting. I mean, I talked through with, with Jake, that he was in the form to be able to win it and how that might happen. Um, best chance against Jakob is last 150, but you've got to be with him, which very few people can do. Um, but yeah, even even though you visualise it lots of times, when it actually happens, you kind of, did I just dream that or, or what? But I had to carry on. So um, yeah, I have the obvious distraction. Uh, how proud is Jeff that he still holds every Dartford Harriers Club record from 1,500 metres up to the marathon? Well very mixed feelings about that if that's still the case it, it took me years to I had the 800 at one point as well briefly um took me years to chip away at that and some of them are quite respectable some aren't so really 40 years is it uh, come on Dartford Harriers come on senior men get those uh, records brought up into the modern era get some super spikes on and uh, bring them down because I've held them for long enough and the club needs to move on uh, how often does Jake do strength and conditioning? Twice a week, uh, usually on a Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday evening and a Saturday afternoon. Um, and we also, I also set for all of my athletes, I coach five, um, prehab, a prehab session, which is 45 minutes, usually on a Wednesday. 
uh, of core and strengthening and bespoke exercises for any weaknesses that they've got. So if they've got tight hamstrings or calves are tight or lack of hip flexibility, then there are exercises built in there. So you could say three sort of S and C uh, plus yoga once a week. What session did you hate to do when training for the marathon? Well, Alan Story was my coach and he was a big believer in um, hard tempo runs, uh, like almost simulating race pace. And I didn't used to get a, up above 10 miles, but on your own, if you've got to run nine miles at close to your marathon race pace, uh, especially if you're full-time working or it's at the end of a day or if it's raining outside, I used to find that hard. We build up to it from three or four miles at a hard pace um over the weeks but by the time it got up to nine or ten that's that's quite a daunting session to to take on uh, you, you enjoy it but you enjoy it more afterwards uh do you think jake has hit his peak at middle distance and will he move up to the five thousand meters at some point i don't think he's hit his peak he was quite a late developer um he was a very small kid in his mid-teens um i mentioned recently that when he was an under 17 he was ranked equal 26th in Scotland. You can have a look at that on Power of 10. So he's come from a long way back, and I think um, there is still scope for progress. Uh, I don't think 5,000 metres will be an option for him, but there's other distances, including 3,000 metres indoors, which he's just dipping a toe in the water with, and that went OK um, last indoor season. Outside of Jake's 1,500 metres in Oregon, what's the best moment you've commentated on? Well. I was in the stadium for both of the Super Saturdays at London 2012, for those that remember that far back. And I don't think we'll ever get those circumstances again. Um, three British gold medals. I, I called in two of them. Um, uh, my colleague did the Greg Rutherford men's long jump, but I did Jess Ennis's heptathlon right through and Mo's 10,000. And it, it's 10 years now, but when you see the pictures and hear the sound and it and know that it's home success in a London Olympic main stadium. I think that's very hard to beat. And I also called the Bolt 100 metre final there. Um, those are very vivid. London 2017 was pretty good as well. So, but I enjoy uh, all of the announcing gigs that I get, especially championships. Do you and Jake always agree on training sessions? More or less, yeah. The the pattern that I get into is that I set the individual week session. They know they know um, already what training looks like in terms of overall mileage and uh, longest run and races uh, from now right the way around to March. But I leave it until a Sunday before setting the following the following week's Monday to Sunday sessions. So I upload those to Training Peaks. People have a look. Um, they sometimes come back. I mean, it, often it's to do with um, scheduling uh do you mind if i do that run that way around or i can't get to a gym on wednesday afternoon can i do it on thursday it, that kind of thing um but otherwise there's a dialogue uh around what happens and it's it, it's evolved to be that it is a dialogue so so we generally agree on training racing racing can be um more of a discussion especially around cross-country running uh would you make the beer mile an Olympic sport if you were paid a hundred thousand? Do you mean if I was paid a hundred thousand or the winner of the beer mile? There's some great uh offshoot events from athletics. Uh, why front smile? I can remember those being a thing when people had had a few beers on a Saturday night racing either a hundred meters or a mile in their pants. Uh, beer mile what used to be called the chunder mile. I've had a go at a four before beer relay it, they're actually pretty good i think it's um cory bellamore who's uh run really well at a, a beer mile and it does have a novelty factor but i think in truth it's mostly to try and see if people spew up as well as to see if they can run quickly but it's it's a skill there is a youtube viewership for it not not the olympic games but it's uh it's a it's an offshoot of athletics that i quite like to watch uh my son is eight, nine in April. He loves distance running and he's showing some promise with his times. At what age should we be looking at giving him a more structured training plan? Well into the future. Uh, great that he's involved in athletics. Have him doing other stuff, football, tennis, swimming, basketball, hockey, rugby, ev everything. Have everything uh, uh, that you've tried and then find out what you enjoy most, what you're good at, 
Um, and I think as you start to get more serious, if athletics is your thing, have a personal best at every distance. So try the pole vault, try the javelin, try the hammer and the triple jump and the hurdles. Uh, find out within that what you like, what you're good at, what you need to work at, whether you have got the right level of athleticism. Um, and then I, I always used to think joining a club at 14, 15 was about right. But I think if you leave it that late, kids have tended to be hoovered up by other sports that are uh, more actively recruiting at a younger age. But but the key to it is enjoyment, multi-sport, then multi-event, and then in your mid-teens, perhaps start to train more regularly, um, do athletics or running or whatever it is within track and field every other day. And I had this discussion with somebody over the weekend at the Scottish Athletics Awards. By the time you get to university as a distance runner, male, you, you may be wanting to be running 50 miles a week in your first, first year. So you shouldn't really be exceeding that in the sixth form. This It's just my opinion, but build up to it. So it's not all consuming, but you are making progress, setting personal bests and enjoying it. What three bits of advice would you give to someone who's a junior teenager, aspires to go to the Olympics, plus someone who just starts running in lockdown for a bit of fun and fitness? Uh, enjoy it. Personal best is what it's about. So just um, developing yourself. So if you can only run three miles, work at it and try and run four, um, even if that involves walking and running to get to that. Uh, don't worry too much about what everybody else is doing. Join a club. That's that's key because I think uh, there's a very social part to athletics that you miss if you just train exclusively on your own. And that includes adult runners coming into running that it is it is good. It, it, it's enjoyable and it's easier if you run in a group. And the other and final little tip I give to any runners um, that have got the daunting prospect of a long run uh, weekly or coming up, uh, run point to point, get a lift somewhere, run to a friend's house. Uh, get a bus somewhere, get a train, run back, follow a river. Uh, don't always run in loops or or out and back. It just just spice it up, mix it up a little bit um, by running point to point. But uh, try and enjoy it at least 51% of the time. It's a great sport.